Queen's Council are absolutely delighted that John McDonnell accepted our invitation to speak at our May Day this year. He's a Labour MP who's represented Hayes and Harlington since 1997. He was born in Liverpool. His dad was a bus driver. His dad was a bus driver. His mum worked in BHS. He wasn't raised from the profits of Panamanian bank accounts. <laughs> he was brought up in a trade union family. His father was a branch secretary of the Transport and General Workers Union. And since being appointed Shadow Chancellor, he has championed the principle of tax justice and tackling tax avoidance, which is why we want to welcome his contribution to May Day today. Let me just say, let me just say with regard to the last speaker, I hope, I hope, I express this hope that there is an early negotiated and just settlement of this dispute and I hope that can be brought about at the soonest opportunity. It was meant, it's been a quiet week in London. It's been a rough one, to be frank. It's been a rough one, but to be frank, that, that settlement, that just decision in the Hillsborough case was a bright light in this week. As I said, I was born in Liverpool but lost the accent when we moved south for, for work. And my family have, um, have always been reds, both in terms of politics and in terms of football. My mum and dad, when they got married, their uh, honeymoon was a Liverpool home match, a Liverpool away match. And my dad was a true romantic. He threw in a reserve match as well. <laughs> but let me tell you, it taught us a number of lessons. And one of the lessons was the lesson of the sun and Murdoch and the power that they exerted. I was contacted by some journalist some time ago, and he said, look, I'm a, I'm a journalist for the sun. I said, you can be one or the other, but you can't be both. <laughs> let, me, let me bring you solidarity greetings today from Jeremy Corbyn. He's speaking at the London rally today, and a solidarity greetings from a socialist leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> Workers have, been, workers have been marching right away across the UK on May Day celebrations this weekend in larger numbers than we've had for years. Our movement is growing stronger and it's building. I think stronger for a generation. And it demonstrates something. It demonstrates actually a form of solidarity that is now bringing the era of neoliberalism to an end. We're campaigning right the way across the country, dispute after dispute, campaign after campaign against austerity. And I think now that dominance of neoliberal ideology is beginning to shatter. And we've got the window of an opportunity we've not had for a generation, maybe for 30 years at least, to transform that, transform that ideology. And what we've been saying time and time again is begin to catch hold, that austerity is not an economic necessity, it's a political choice that was made by the Tories. And I think what's interesting as well, this last few weeks has exposed it even more. The Panama leaks demonstrated what an unjust, unfair and corrupt tax system that we have. And how, if we got the rich and the corporations to pay their way, there would be no need for austerity, there'd be no deficit whatsoever. And let me give you this commitment at the Shadow Chancellor. When we go back into power in 2020 or before, if we can, we'll introduce a fair tax system. There'll be no more Googles or Vodafones exposing the way it's an unjust system. And we'll bring the rich to make sure that they pay their way. At the moment, you've seen in the recent weeks some shareholder revolts of what's gone on. BP, if you look at what's happened in terms of pay, you have now, whereas in the 90s, the chief executives and directors of the FTSE 100 were paid 50 times their workers' average salary, and it was a disgrace. It's now 150 times. 
What we want to do now is populate those companies' remuneration committees with trade unionists. Let trade unionists decide whether or not the directors and the chief execs are worth that sort of pay. But this is generated not in some tax haven in the Cayman Islands and elsewhere. This is generated in the City of London, the banks, the accountancy firms that have made tax evasion and tax avoidance on industrial scale and industry within this country, where they launder money from the City of London to the tax havens and then into the pockets of the richest in our country. Let me make this absolutely clear. We will, tax, we will cut clamp down on the tax evasion and tax avoidance when we go back into power, estimated at 130 billion a year. We know maybe not all of that is collectible, but we know at least half will be our target. We will bring those people as well who've evaded and yes, industrially avoided, we will bring them to justice. We will name and shame those people who, through this tax system, have ripped our country off over decades. China. But what's interesting as well in recent weeks is that people have woken up to the fact that this is a crisis that's been used by these Tories to systematically attempt to dismantle the welfare state that was introduced by the Labour government under Attlee in 1945. And we've seen it in virtually every sector, whether it's health, housing, education, the attacks that have been waged on working people. And I want to pay tribute to some of those people, some of those organisations, some of those campaigns who've stood up against the cuts and privatisation and austerity. I want to say this, I want to congratulate RMT for standing up against the privatisation of Cali Mac. I coordinated the RMT parliamentary group over the years, helped re-found it, and it's been time and time again the attempts to privatise, and each time we've beaten them back, and I hope and are confident we can do it again. I also want to pay tribute to PCS. The campaign, the campaign that they've waged against the cuts of HMRC officers. I was the coordinator now, and Chris has taken over as the PCS coordinator of the parliamentary group. We'll do everything that we can to support you in Parliament and your demonstrations and, yes, elsewhere if necessary, to make sure those jobs are protected. You know as well as I do, I was involved in launching with the Bakers Union the fast food campaign. I want to pay tribute to the bakers and the young people who've raised that campaign against the McDonald's and all these other companies that have forced people on low wages, zero out contracts and intimidated trade unions when they tried to organise. These were the heroes and heroines of our movement. You know as well as I do that in England we've had the junior doctors dispute and there's been some discussion about whether people appear on picket lines. Let me say this, Jeremy and I have been on picket lines of demonstrations in support of the junior doctors because this is an attack not just on the junior doctors, but on every health worker. And it's the Tories' attempt then to line them up for privatisation of the NHS, and we will stand in solidarity with them throughout their struggle. Yeah. I, want to pay, I just want to pay special tribute as well to a group of people who high helped well, in the first formation of their organisations. For a long while, people with disabilities in this country, to be frank, were targeted by the Tories for austerity. Cuts, the introduction of the work capability assessment, people assessed for work, and then thousands of them dying before they could even take up that work, others sanctioned with no benefits left whatsoever. And then two organisations we brought together. One of them was Disabled People Against the Cuts, and the other was Black Triangle. I want to pay tribute for them to the campaign that they've waged a direct action, occupation, which was forced at us out of the contract for the WCA, and is now taken on Maximus and others. And I also want to congratulate them for the direct action that they've taken in turning up in Parliament and occasionally seeking to storm the parliamentary chamber <laughs> so they have their voice heard. It is, because, it is because of them that people with disabilities in this country now have a representative voice that's on the, on the campaign again. Let me just say this though briefly. This isn't just about cuts and austerity. It is also attack on basic civil liberties in this country. The trade union bill 
is an attempt, it's an existential threat to the existence of trade unions in this country. We've had a number of victories in the Parliament at the moment. Actually, we didn't get them in the Commons, we got them in the House of Lords. I've been trying to abolish the place for 30 years. <laughs> I'm beginning to have a rethink, not on the hereditary principle though. Now, we've defeated them at least three times this week and we'll push them back. And we'll try even further. But don't underestimate the determination of the Tories to get this bill through. So if it does become law, if we can't defeat it, our combined forces in the Commons and elsewhere, if we can't defeat it, let me give you this commitment. When we go back into power in 2020 or before, in the first 100 days of the next Labour government, this bill will be abolished. We will scrap it. And we will bring forward... We will bring forward a legislation which restores trade union rights in this country and implements the ILO conventions on trade union rights so that we have again a democratic and free trade union movement in the UK. Yay! Finally, let me just say this. May Day is a time of international solidarity as well. And I just say this to you, I know there's differences of view on all of this. But the issues that we face as a movement are European and global. Issues around climate change, tax evasion, tax avoidance, the neoliberal policies that have been implemented through the EU right the way across Europe. That's why the Labour Party now is combining with socialist and social democratic and other progressive movements, but Davis, Sarissa, right the way across Europe to campaign on these issues, but to campaign for the reform of the EU so that we stay within to reform it and make it a force for good and make it a force for a social Europe rather than the exploitative one that we have at the moment. Let me say very clearly, I know there's a disagreement on this among some comrades and brothers and sisters. I'm campaigning to remain within because I want that force of alliance of a trade union and labour movement that does transform Europe, tackles climate change, tackles tax evasion and avoidance, and brings forward trade union rights established throughout Europe in every country of Europe as well. Finally, finally in the international terms, our conscience as a movement does not end in the North Sea or at the Channel. Our conscience expands to the globe. That's why we welcome refugees into this country. That's why... That's why... That's why Cameron shamed us when he refused to allow 3,000 children, unaccompanied, vulnerable kids, to come to this country. We demand that they are allowed to come here and find the comfort and succor and safety that they deserve. Finally, finally, whatever happens in the future, in terms of Scotland and England and their, their futures, let me just say this. What unites us will always be class solidarity. It is class that holds it together. And I give this commitment. I give this commitment. We will campaign for a Labour government in 2020, no matter what they throw at us, and you've seen it this week, what they've been throwing at us. But we're confident that we can take power. And then when we do take power, and I just hope we can do it beforehand, but if not, if it's 2020, when we take power, we will work as a basis of class right the way across the United Kingdom, uniting in solidarity from that lesson of two centuries ago that we put on our banners. Unity is strength. An injury to one is an injury to all. The workers united will never be defeated. It's solidarity, brothers and sisters. Solidarity on this 90th anniversary of the general strike. 